గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ వెల్కమ్ టు ద హార్ట్ అండ్ సోల్ ప్రోగ్రామ్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా బ్రిచ్ టు లైఫ్ మినిస్ట్రీస్ ఐఎమ్ వెరీ హ్యాపీ టు వెల్కమ్ యూ టు అవర్ కౌన్సిలింగ్ స్టేషన్స్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద స్టేషన్ ఇస్ ఇన్ మ్యాంగ్లూర్ ఇన్ నిర్మల ట్రేడ్స్ ఇన్ పంబువల్ జంక్షన్ నియర్ టు జోడి యూ కెన్ కమ్ అండ్ విజిట్ అవర్ స్టేషన్ అండ్ వీ విల్ అసిస్ట్ యూ హౌ టు గెట్ రిడ్ ఆఫ్ యువర్ ఫ్యామిలీ ఇష్యూస్ అండ్ యువర్ పర్సనల్ ఇష్యూస్ so in today's uh, uh, thoughts we can uh, think of uh, certain parts of bible as well as uh, in uh, general areas so today i w- wanted to share with you the most important things is a, a essential things of a family each and every family has their own significance uh, uh, policies and their styles in my family i am using a, a language what we could say that uh, a love language that's not in uh, our mother tongue or other tongues but uh, we don't know much words uh, sometimes but uh, it can communicate well and specifically to the people so today i would like to uh, focus on that area six prerequisites for a good communication in a home six prerequisites to to a good communication communication is the power of life exchange is the process of life someone says like this communication to men communication to god both are important to have a healthy life in this world like a communication is a main issue of many families and how do we communicate so number one thing we need in home situation is uh a husband must want to please god more than anything else husband is uh, or man is stood as an embodiment of the value system children should not look mother as a value system children should look father as a value system as an embodiment of value system mother is supporting that value system of course mother and father have equal right and equal position in the home but we need to understand that a husband and wife should keep as an embodiment they should be a perfect example for the children to look for the value system what's the second corinthians chapter 5 verse 9 it says therefore we also have an ambition whether at home or absent to be pleasing to god to be pleasing to him husband to please god wife should please god that should be the object of the family every family so if it is god centered family once i mention about it you are making a heavenly home so both of you are admiring give admiration give respect accept acceptations honoring providing caring making a pleasures of both and have a beautiful language you are communicating with a beautiful language that nobody can understand it but uh, among you that's a powerful language so husband and wife should please not each other the first priority to please the lord alone then they have to please each other and uh, for a better communication husband and uh, wife should be humble so what the word of god says about humility is rewardable nature humility is a rewardable nature the word of god says in matthew chapter 5 it says those who are having this humbleness or humility meekness they will inherit the earth god is noticing that the humility of husband humility of the wife i know one family in a in a place of our state they both are talking with a very decent language that is so attractive they are honoring each other so i learned this principle that a wife and a husband both should be humble for a better communication or a good communication if the husband is arrogant and adamant and proud enough 
the communication will cut down and the tone will change situation will collapse they don't expect any peaceful atmosphere there many families are nowadays are suffering because wife is talking from herself husband also is uh, talking from his self ladies are speaking more than 25 24000 verses per day gents are speaking 6000 verses per day that's the estimate uh, words they are uh, sharing but uh, the within this word they are creating a heaven or they are creating a hell the word of god says they both must be humble therefore i the person of the lord implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with you have been called there's a call for you you have to walk according the call with all humility gentleness with patience showing tolerance to one another in love being diligent to preserve the unity of the spirit in bond of peace this is a biblical standard for each and every husband and wife in ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 to 3 is a standard for us how to communicate what a gentle family what a gentle people they will speak in a humble words each word contains the power of heaven that will heal people that will motivate people that will encourage people people are lovely to are uh, hungry to hear that voice i met a person recently and uh, he was actually uh, he was suffering from uh, sickness for a long time but uh, the time i spent with this man very lovely voice very humble voice last eight years he has been he has been working for poor he is calling everybody with a sir with a humble voice even the beggar also he is telling the almost addressing the same same way so he was so much attracted with his language here we can see both should understand that both are responsible and accountable god for their communication this is another principle whatever you are talking with your wife whatever you are talking with your husband you are accountable to your god keep this idea in mind stop saying vague words meaningless words what's the matthew chapter uh, 12 verse 36 says but i tell you that every careless word that people speak they shall give an accounting for it in the day of the judgment i and you we have to stand before the person so god at the day of judgment at the day of judgment god will call everybody should uh, give an account to that one so once upon a time people could not uh, believe that statement whether my voice is recorded or not who can keep my voice but nowadays even if you spoke a word 30 years back there are system is there to find out to your old and worses and here the word of god says we have to give an account to god husband and wife both should give an account to god for the word they are speaking and uh, in a husband must know how to listen the wife should to know how to listen good communication is depend on good listening skill so normally ladies have more tendencies to speak and uh, husbands are uh, listeners most of the husbands are listeners but uh, here word of god says you both must uh, hear first especially Ch- proverb chapter 18 verse 13 says he who gives an answer before he hears is folly and shame to him is common for a man and woman before giving an answer you have to listen first whatever uh, your spouses wanted to speak to you 
you listen first. So normally, this listening is a big problem. Once I listen to the family problems of husband, wife, now I told that wife, sister, please uh, allow your husband to speak. He is always listening. So now let him speak and you should listen. She said, what I told you is perfect and correct. I don't want to argue. She moved out of that place. She closed her door. That time we were talking, husband and myself was talking. As a counselor, I was listening. The Spirit of God started to work in my heart and I heard some noises. Then I told her husband, Sir, you go and ask her to come. And uh, when he knocked the door and uh, he told me that she locked from inside. So immediately I felt some restlessness in my spirit. I told husband, no, no, something is going to happen. Please knock it loudly and strongly. Something is going to happen. That's what I felt. He knocked and almost kicked the door. Pushed the door. Finally, she came out and I saw that uh, she made some arrangement to put at the end of her life. The fun was actually rounding with that uh, sari. She put it there with the snow. So something, something was must have done there, but Lord saved us. So this is happened in during the time of communication. Husband and wife should understand that you must be humble before you are going to speak to your spouse. If you speak, when you speak, if you think that you are not uh, uh, free to talk that time, don't, spoke, don't speak that time. Because that will lead to more problems. This is what the uh, word of God says, listening well means concentrating on carefully concentrating what the other person is saying. Don't listen, argue things, but listen the original things, the original matters your spouse wanted to speak to you. Second, don't inter interrupt through your actions or attitude, never stop that person to talk while talking and also don't show any black face or uh, changes of your mood in your face while your spouse is talking if the spouse is talking and uh, uh, expecting that uh, your face is going to change you don't show any emotional ups and down there listen carefully and don't give an immediate answer because sometimes your spouse is provoking you to come to the another phase of the communication. You must be under the emotional control. So there are a lot of things we have to understand about the speak developing a speaking listening skill like a speaking skill. When you communicate, communicate only the original matter. A group of people came to Jesus Christ. They asked him, Sir, we got an adulterous woman from the last night's search. That time Jesus was just writing on the floor. They raised the, again the question, Sir, what to do with this woman? According to the law, the old, old law, the law of Moses, she was stoned to death. But what you say about it? Jesus, without any doubt, not, not looking anybody's eyes, while he is writing, he said that if any one of you are free of these kinds of sin, you can stone her to death. What happened means that communication was so powerful. They were searching for a sinful woman the whole night. Irrespective of their age, the group of these religious men were searching for an adulterous woman. Night is a dark time. 
anything would happen finally they got this woman of course that woman was a sinner but what was the jesus answer he listened to all these people he never argued with them from where did you got this woman was evidence of that who led with this woman who make her in this situation he never raised any of this question he listened to their statements at the time the holy spirit started to work in the heart of jesus and started to work in the the heart of these people god raised this question to the all the leaders of all the elders all the young saints those who came over there if there is no sin in you you can stone death her they all left her so this is a power of good communication jesus with all his humility he listen carefully to these people so we have to understand that a husband and a wife must be careful about while talking the volume of their voice <laughs> they are not supposed to raise heavy or too much volume and the tone of their voice so when you are speaking to your husband who is a husband who is a wife you must value them husband is an ambassador of lord wife is an ambassador of lord you both are ambassadors so don't raise voice okay next facial expressions give respect take respect your facial expression should give and take respect and your gestures only gentle that's what a better court says that a gentle expression should be advisable do not roll the eyes so that uh, roll of eyes sometimes leads to devilish talk and uh, don't discuss don't throw your body posture body posture can help you for communication but uh, certain body movement will misunderstand or uh, misleading people and what the james chapter 4 verse 17 says therefore to one who knows the right things to do and does not do to him it is a sin if you do not know how to do it don't do it if you do it it is a sin james is saying about it and a husband and wife must be willing to put forth their effort and spend time that uh, it takes a good communication so you both should take an initiative to give a better communication with uh, your spouses roman chapter 12 verses 10 to 12 says be devoted to one another in brotherly love give preference to one another in honor not lagging behind in diligence fervent in spirit serving the lord rejoicing in hope preserving the tribulation devoted to prayer as i'm sure that this is season of the christmas this is a time for a new year we will wish people new year wishing christmas wishing with our word we are going to bless people motivate and encourage people so a better communication can carry the real message in the gospel your blessing must be a great blessing for them forever so you have to develop a, such a great communication in your home and also you don't tell lies to each other what i am trying to say if you try to say lie there is no doubt the satan wanted to involve you in a communication so if you put one lie or two lie three lie or a big lie or a small lie there is no question about uh, what kind of what amount of lie you are telling but once you touch the lies in your tongue the satan also will cooperate with you to tell more lies that will be a perverted communication between husband and wife 
that will bring not the blessings instead of that that will bring the curses so beware of our communication give a good communication there are certain principle we have to understand we must truly desire to guard our lips psalm 141 verse 3 says set a guard o lord over my mouth keep watch over the door of my lips keep a door over watch my lips and also proverb chapter 21 verse 23 says he who guards his mouth and his tongue guards his soul from trouble so your soul and your tongue has a deeper connection connectivity so we must understand that we do guard our lips we will avoid all kinds of troubles so that's what uh, proverb chapter 4 verse 23 also says guard our heart king solomon says king solomon was very able king he was able to communicate but he really is that guard our lips is the way to guard our soul and guard our heart so this principle is uh, always advisable for all people to keep in our hands so christ we believe that christ communication was a holy communication he communicated well ephesians chapter 4 verse 25 says therefore laying aside false goods speak truth each, each one of you with his neighbor for we are the members of one another and also proverbs chapter 6 verse 16 and 17 it says that there are six things which god hates yes seven which are abomination to him a lying tongue a lying tongue so we should keep our tongue for a better use a holy communication always christ has done it for us a holy communication so we must uh, avoid uh, certain thing from our communication bitterness what is bitterness a fixed attitude or to sharpen the harshness avoid wrath a temporary outburst of anger avoid anger a slow burn of uh, indignation avoid it clamor yelling loud quarreling avoid it slander speaking evil of a person avoid it so malice speech of uh, designed to injure a person or making a, a someone to suffer avoid it but what should include it when you communicate you can use kindness gracious easy courteous good and helpful words you can utilize use it for communication a tender heartness compassionate sympathetic and forgiveness giving of of all kind of revenge and grudges proverb chapter 16 verse 32 says he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty and he who rules his spirit than he who captures a city so we have to keep a good communication jesus communication was holy and jesus communication was purposeful purposeful and kind communication was very much clear that's what a matthew chapter 5 verse 37 says but your statement be yes yes or no no anything beyond that is evil that is evil dear ones in this morning we have to prepare ourselves to give a, a better communication a purposeful communication a holy communication within our home situation so that our children will be better communicators so they will carry the love of christ to the world which is really hungry to know our savior so in this christmas season i wish you all a happy christmas and a happy new year may the god bless you and give you a, a fine new year 2017 for all of you we will continue to pray for you and i wish that everybody is having a beautiful meaningful purposeful fruitful family life may god bless you thank you so much